Welcome. It's great to be here, and uh, congratulations for taking over. Now that you got rid of Wolf, we can have some fun on the show. So Exactly. I always leaned on him for all the banking expertise. I'm, I'm all alone here. No, Brian, it, it's, I'm glad you're still, you're still on with us. So, so first on, on what Wall Street liked, it sounds like the, the net interest income that's tied to the Fed rate hikes, that, that's forecast to be a huge help for earnings. What do you guys expect there? Well, we, we had told people last quarter earnings that we'd get 600 to 700 million and we ended up getting 800 million, so that was good. And then we told them for next quarter, for the third quarter, over the second quarter, say 900 to a billion. So then we said it'd be a like amount. What that really is, is the driving of gathering deposits from our core customers and investing either in the loans that are growing back a trillion dollars or in the securities. And all that benefits by a higher rate structure. I mean, most of my CEO, 12 and a half years in, has been in a very low rate structure. Structure. And so when rates go yes. up a little bit, we make more money in restoring that NII. What is your expectation on, on how aggressive and how much more the Fed is going to do? Well, we, when we calculate the numbers I just gave you, we just use the market's forward expectations of 75 basis points and 50. But I think, you know, the interesting thing is, and I heard you and your colleagues talking, you know, two days ago it was they've got to go faster, now they can go less. At the end of the day, it, this, is, this is data dependent, as they say, it's meeting to meeting, it's what's going on. But if you look at our customer base, the consumer is posing the greatest benefit to the Fed and the greatest trouble in that they're employed. They're earning money, they're spending money, they have uh, lots of borrowing capability, the credit quality is still strong, and they have more money in their accounts at the end of June than they had at, at the end of May, and frankly, multiples of what they had pre-pandemic. So that makes the Fed's jobs tough because they're trying to slow down this wonderful thing we have called the American consumer, who their spending helps drive our economy, and it's going pretty strong right now, up double digits for the month of June, and frankly, up double digits for the first couple weeks of July over last year's July. That, that's sort of my big question on, on your earnings report. Your earnings and your guidance, Brian, say that things are okay. And yet, you know, the, the capital markets, the bond market, the stock market, the currency market says that things are not okay. So how do we square that? Well, it comes a little bit if you're heavily involved in the markets business, like you know Jimmy Demar and the team that run that are. You know, it's pretty tough times right now. The worst first half uh, for bonds and stocks in the at, at 50 years or something like that. And Andy uh, Sieg and Katie Knox in the private banking. That's tough. But if you're in the consumer banking and lending business, the team, it, teams are pretty good. And mid, middle market is going strong. And loans grew. Our loans grew 100 billion dollars year over year to give you a sense, and are back above pre-pandemic levels. So, you know, it like anything, it's nice. To have a balanced company. So if people are worried about the markets, we've got NII and, and fees and consumer and, 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 and GTS, the global transaction service, that make up for that. So even our global banking, with investment banking dropping a billion dollars plus year over year, was, was just down a little bit in revenue with a billion dollars in that high, you know, the high corporate client base mm -hmm. you know, going away. They still almost made it on the NII growth through fees and through loans and deposits. So it's wonderful to have the mix of businesses we have, and yet it's tough in the capital markets right now. You and your colleagues talk about it every day and we don't see anything largely different. I guess what I'm what I'm wondering really is the message though that the, that the market is sending when when you are seeing strong loan growth and a strong consumer and you're not saying any any major signs of recession I'm wondering about that disconnect in the outlook for the economy. Well, that's, that's what uh, people get paid to do in a, in a trading environment. But it's simply put, the, the reality is the Fed has to slow down inflation and take it on. And they are going to take it on. And they've driven rates up at a pretty good clip. And they got to keep going till that inflation breaks. And so that's what the market's going to be on tenor hooks every day, you know, as they watch those statistics come out that whether inflation's peaking or flattening or turning down. And you're seeing, you know, housing slow down dramatically. Why? Because rates are up. But the people, the 60 million consumers that have a mortgage today, are locked in. They, they don't go up when rates go up. It's all the new home building, new home buying and stuff like that that slows down. And you're seeing that happen. Our mortgage originations and others were down this quarter because of it. By the way, our home equity originations are back over two and a half billion this quarter, mm. up from a billion four or five quarters again, because people have the equity in their home to borrow out. So there's always countervails to this. But the, the core debate right now is can the Fed slow the, the economy down, which they have to, and all the economists, including ours, predict a, you know, ours pr now predict a slight recession. But 
it's going to be hard for them to slow it down given the strong employment. Unemployment's at 3.6. You've you got to get it up a lot higher. And so that's the tension the market fights about every day. But I think people should keep in mind that that's not the worst problem to have. Low unemployment, good consumer spending, and re reasonably good corporate profits are not the worst thing to have as the Fed does its work. So you're sticking with your relatively optimistic take, Brian. It sounds like you're in the, the soft landing camp, which has really been interesting as we've gotten other today there a report that apple is going to slow down on spending to prepare for tougher times you know jamie diamond about a month ago said he's bracing for an economic hurricane you sound much more sanguine than that than what we're hearing well what we're talking about is not what's going to happen you know in 23 because if the economy will slow down and our guys say even at the end of 22 it may slow down and go slightly negative the Candace Browning Platt and our research team but the reality is it's a much different environment when you have this kind of fundamentals that are strong does that mean things could go wrong look there's geopolitical risks there's other things that we all know about but that's that's different but from the core america what we're seeing in our consumers today and that's the distinction i always make is don't don't test people what they say they're going to do look at what they're doing and in two weeks of july so far they have spent 10, 11 percent more money than they did last year, and transactions are up six or seven percent. And so, when people say inflation is driving the dollar volume, transactions wouldn't go up unless people were out spending money, vacations, and other things that they weren't doing last year at this time in the same amount. So, that's the thing. So, right now, we're saying we don't see it. And by the way, most people don't see it right now. What they worry about is if the Fed does its job, that you'll have a higher, higher probability it could tip over into recession. No matter what. We're going from a four to five percent growth rate in the economy in a couple of year, in last year to somewhere uh, pretty low this year to somewhere pretty low next year. All that doesn't feel mm -hmm. good because the economy is slowing down, and that's what you're seeing out there. Yeah, and you mentioned the solid the, the solid double digit loan growth that you're seeing. Why, why? What is driving that? And and how long do you anticipate we'll see it? Well, it'll normalize as the, uh, you know, the recovery normalizes. So, you know, remember we had a shoot up in loan growth in 2020, then a big drop, you know, when people paid off those loans after the panic borrowing it took place, the capital markets opened up and everybody stampeded to that. And now you're seeing this sort of normalize. So you're seeing the, the loan production arc across our consumer and middle market. And frankly, I think we're growing share. The team's doing a great job. But by and large, we have outgrown the economy. We are outgrowing the economy uh, before the pandemic, and now we're outgrowing it now. But, you know, a lot of it's coming now. Now, we're ba basically back to a trillion dollars loans round number. That's where we were coming in the pandemic. So it's most of it's been a recovery. People using their lines in small business and in the middle market businesses, you know, using their lines at a more at the rate they traditionally use at it fallen by three, four or five hundred basis points. Those types of numbers. So everybody is doing incrementally more. Now, is are all corporate clients, our commercial clients, are they worried about what's going to happen with the Fed fights inflation? Are they worried about what could happen to their profit margins given the pricing pressure, the input pressure? Pressure they have absolutely, but they're trying to manage through it, and that's that's what's going on right now. And as you talk to them, it's the classic thing: I'm worried about the future, but I feel pretty good about the current environment. And that's kind of the interesting sort of dialogue that goes on every day. And so, when does that tip? That'll be the question when the Fed can get inflation understood well enough that people mm -hmm. can uh, plot a path forward. But given that, of course, people are being more careful about hiring and about spending because why wouldn't you be? So what about the markets group? You, you mentioned that that was obviously a weak spot across bank for banks, but yours was a little bit weaker than some of your competitors on capital markets, on investment banking. At what point do you cut back in this economic environment or, or are you preparing for a rebound? Well, that's, that's sort of, in the investment banking fee category, we maintain our number three position. So we were three overall before and we we're three overall and everybody had a massive drop of 40%, whatever it was. We're not cutting back. You know, these things go up and down. And by the way, as you well know, the way the compensation works in, the, in those environments, you, you know, the compensation is relatively self-adjusting. But the team we've hired that Matthew Coder has put on the field for corporate investment banking is very strong. And then we have this added advantage that we get a lot of business from our middle market client base led by Wendy Stewart. And that is a significant part, and that tends to have more uh, resiliency to it. Nobody right now, given the capital markets, but resiliency over time. If you go to the true trading, we're up 10 or 11 percent uh, year over year in uh, trading fixed income. Uh, macro was good. Equities was good. I think it was another record mm. or near record in equities. So Jimmy DeMar and team's going on. So we're not cutting back anything. We invested heavily in our balance sheet. They're up $200 billion more than they were three, three years ago when Tom Montag started the initiative. And the team's doing a good job. And Tom's, it, and uh, Jimmy's doing a good job driving it. So we feel good. So you won't hear us cutting back. We always are managing 
double-digit headcount. This quarter, we hired 7,000 people, and out, outside our interns, we're actually down six or 700 people in headcount. That's just to maintain the staffing and invest in the areas and take it out of the areas where our driven operational excellence, our flat expense management thought process drives our efficiency and allows us to reinvest that in the future. Yeah, you mentioned the flat expenses. Like, I know you got a question on that from Mike Mayo on the conference call. It, it is notable that you didn't you didn't change the expense guidance. He asked, why don't you hedge with the expense guidance? So you're projecting higher revenues and not changing expenses in an inflationary environment. How do, how how do you do that? How does that work? Well, what the the revenue is coming from. The NII, the, the spread revenue, which largely comes in the consumer, commercial bank, and the wealth management business, it comes with very little cost attached to it because we don't need any more commercial lenders as rates rise and people borrow. You know, you don't need more commercial lenders to generate the spread that comes into the business. We we have basically been subsidizing our customers at the zero floor on deposits for for a, you know a couple of years now. It went on for a bunch of years before the rates rose in 16, 17, 18. And so as we recover that, it doesn't take any expense. Now, the, the most important thing in our company is our discipline expense management culture. We brought expenses down and had 20 quarters of operating leverage. We just completed our fourth quarter in a row now, and we feel very good about what's going on and how we manage expenses. Investing $3 billion plus in technology, more financial advisors, more commercial bankers, at the same time taking expenses out through process efficiency and effectiveness. And mm. if you manage your headcount ahead, you can plan that out. And we, we sit there and manage headcount by month for 36 straight months ahead. And I, you know, whether that's exactly right three years from now, people are working on it every day to say, how do we reduce head can out there and invest it in something mm -hmm. else and that's what we try to do I also wanted to bring up um, another something else that stood out this this quarter which was the regulatory expenses the 425 million in costs related there were the two the messaging one and then there was the one that CNBC had been looking into and investigating uh, about how you handled some of the unemployment disbursements during COVID Brian wh why did you settle on this one and and is there going to be any future impact for instance on Bank of America and, and how these kind of federal issues get handled well the the, the future impact the, the, the unemployment was from a couple of years ago where we put in filters to try to save the taxpayers money because this was a US taxpayer and a California taxpayers and the other states taxpayers money that went out and people start taking advantage of the situation defrauding and getting you know, applying for multiple cards and all the stories you've read in the paper we went to help we, we we went to help and some people got caught we've reimbursed them you know that's what you do you get these things behind us and move on and on the uh, the device thing, as you can see, that was a streetwide street that you're well aware of. And it's behind us now, and we just got to make sure the team does a great job in the future. But frankly, I'm very proud of what our team did during the pandemic, whether it was a consumer deferrals, whether help on employment, PPP, distribution of other benefits, waiving hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars of fees so people could get their stimulus payment without having to pay their outstanding overdraft fees. And during the pandemic, we've changed our overdraft posture even more favorably consumer to the point now where it's, it's, uh, it's pretty modest in terms of what we do. So I'm proud of our team for doing a great job in the pandemic. It's nice to have those things behind us. You, you have, you're given a lot of credit to your, to your managers and your team, Brian. A final question, you know, just listening to you, you're, you're a good snapshot of, of the U.S., right? Huge reach on the consumer. You mentioned housing. Is, is the market, are investors too, do you think, worried too? Are, are they freaking out too much about a recession? Because listening to you talk about the consumer right now, it doesn't feel like we're on the brink of anything dramatic as far as a downturn. What I always say is, is you know, we could, we all we worry about everything. We worry about you know all the parade of horribles you can come to, from China slowing down again to Europe having a problem because of the Russia-Ukraine war to the pandemic resurge. We got a thousand scenarios. We stress test ourselves every day in the markets and every quarter deeply into all the portfolios. We we are very. You know, careful underwriting, you see that in our stress stress results, uh, 10 out of 11 times it's been run with the lowest losses. All that's terrific. So we worry about all that. The reality is what we're saying is, is you look at what's going on right now, that you don't see it now. Unemployment, three and a half to three six, three point six, spending strong, you know, more money in accounts, more borrowing capacity, all the things that drive the U.S. economy, two thirds consumer driven, are still in, in good shape. The question is, the Fed's got to take on inflation, and that's the tension going on, and we'll see that play out. But if 
we all do our job and do capitalist things and hire people and drive and invest and spend like we do, I think it'll be easier to get to a, a soft landing or a, a correction of the inflation rate without causing a deep recession. And our team, you know, our $700 million a year we spend in research, and one of the best research chairmen in the world think it's a very shallow recession that occurs and comes out. And that's largely due to the issues about more technical issues. But you know, the thing I'd watch yeah. is watch uh, new claims for unemployment, still very low, yeah. still very low given people's views of the economy. And, and it hasn't changed much. Well, that makes me feel a little better. Brian, thank you very much for taking the time today on earnings. Thank you, Sarah. Good to see you. Brian Moynihan. And tonight on Mad Money, it's great.